Hello, Auto 480 class. This is Alex Prozage here. I just wanted to start off by uh, wishing everyone some hope and good health during this uncertain period of time in our lives. I know it's been tough trying to uh, readjust to this new way of life, but we're all making do. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to you and your loved ones. So my project that I'll be presenting on today will be looking into the properties of Brown's gas that is produced and consumed by the engine on board a vehicle. This presentation will be dealing with the effects that Brown's gas, also known as HHO gas, has on the internal combustion engine, then how the HHO generator works, then the properties of Brown's gas, followed by how and where the gaseous mixture will be produced, and finally the outcomes of using hydroxy gas to promote combustion in an internal combustion engine. Since the invention of the internal combustion engine, it has gone through many changes to radically improve the quality of its combustion process, from tightening up internal component clearances to remodeling the entire combustion chamber design. Many things have been done to better improve the way things burn. Today, the combustion process is still an imperfect one, and more can be done to improve it. One way is to improve the quality and the value of the air coming into the combustion chamber. This can be done by adding two primary supporters of combustion. The addition of hydrogen and oxygen gas can greatly improve the value of the air entering an engine. These two gases are clean supporters of combustion and are what make up Brown's gas. When this mixture is pumped into an engine cylinder, it introduces more oxygen to promote a more complete combustion process. It also adds another combustible fuel, hydrogen. And when these two are burned together, their byproduct is water. Brown's gas can be produced on board a vehicle using a water electrolysis device commonly known as an HHO generator. By passing an electrical current through water, the water molecules are then split into their corresponding dipole molecules. Water electrolysis, in a sense, is a means of energy storage. When an electrical current is used to split up the water molecules, the energy it took to split them is stored electrochemically in the gaseous mixture. Just like putting an electrical current to a battery, the battery takes the energy and stores it electrochemically to be later used. So does the gaseous mixture of hydrogen and oxygen molecules found at the tail end of the generator. For the process of water splitting to take place, a few things are needed to help get things bubbling. Two electrodes that are submerged in water that are connected with a power source, like a battery, are needed to then pass a current through the water. That'll get things started. An electrolyte catalyst needs to be dissolved in the water to help aid in the electrical potential between the positive and the negative electrodes. For example, you can use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, which are commonly found drain cleaners. Also, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, has positive results as well. Although it is not needed to accomplish water electrolysis, demineralized or distilled water should only be used because a mud will begin to form in the electrolyte solution at the bottom of the generator, which will only hinder its results. Also, it is important to note that table salt should never be used as the electrolyte because chlorine gas can be produced during electrolysis. On the illustration in the slide, you can see a basic HHO generator setup. You can also see a AA battery hanging out in the bottom right corner of the slide, which is providing just enough voltage to get hydrogen gas forming on the left electrode and oxygen gas on the right. The chemical process of water splitting is shown in the illustration to the right. On the anode electrode, the positive side of the generator, Hydroxide ions are oxidized into water and oxygen gas molecules, while on the cathode electrode, the negative side, water is reduced by splitting up the molecule into hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions that are then consumed on the anode, 
and the reaction goes on. For these two half reactions to occur, a minimum of 1.3 volts is needed. This is the average electrical potential needed with a standard concentration of one mole of sodium hydroxide. The voltage requirements will vary with different electrolyte concentrations. The efficiency of an HHO generator is key to successful application on board a vehicle. The reactions taking place inside the generator only need a certain amount of energy to be completed. Any more voltage added to a cell than it is required would only contribute to warming the surrounding water. So if a single cell were supplied with 12 volts and only 1.3 volts is needed to perform the reaction, over 11 volts would be used to only heat the surrounding water, making the generator roughly 10% efficient. The illustration on this slide is a side cutaway view of an HHO generator that shows six individual cells connected in series. All the cells are divided into their own containment to split up the voltage in order to bring it down to an efficient working level. This six cell setup would work great with a nine volt power supply. Here's an illustration I found that shows what a typical HHO generator setup would look like on board a vehicle. You can see you have the generator in the middle hooked up to the battery, which will inadvertently be fed by the alternator of the vehicle. The generator shown is a typical dry cell generator that requires an expansion tank, or as they call the HHO water tank, to be mounted above it. This is where the electrolyte mixture will be fed down into the bottom of the generator while the HHO gas that is produced will exit the top to then be bubbled back through the electrolyte solution in the expansion tank. An essential part to this install would be a flame arrestor on the HHO outlet right before the air intake. This illustration only shows a one-way check valve, which can be useful, but it does not aid in preventing flashback. Also, we need a way to regulate the incoming current to the generator, because there are two electrodes directly connected by conductive electrolyte solution with relatively no resistance between them. So a current limiting device, like a pulse width modulator, is needed or the generator will severely drain the electrical system and potentially burn itself up. When looking at this illustration, you may ask yourself, how is this setup beneficial in improving the efficiency of a vehicle if the energy needed to create the gaseous mixture is pulled from the vehicle's electrical system? Well, there is no such thing as free energy. So the answer lies in the added benefits that Brown's gas offers in the combustion process. The addition of hydrogen will help aid in a higher output heat in the combustion process. Hydrogen has the highest specific energy per unit weight than any other fuel, mainly because it is the lightest element. It is also one of the most abundant elements found on Earth because it is found attached to almost every living thing. With the addition of oxygen and hydrogen gas along with the hydrocarbon fuel in an internal combustion engine, researchers have found lower overall tailpipe emissions and added energy. With a lowered number of unburned hydrocarbons along with a lowered number of carbon monoxide and overall nitrous oxide emissions, hydrogen and oxygen gas show promising results when used in an internal combustion engine. The added gaseous mixture to the engine's incoming air will only help complete the combustion process by not only adding more oxygen to support a more complete burn, but by also adding a high energy, low weight molecule, hydrogen. The illustration shown on this slide is an example of what the combustion process could look like before and after the addition of hydrogen gas. As you can see, the hydrogen provides a brighter and more complete burn of the hydrocarbons, resulting in a cleaner emission. The research study I had found that I used to do this report used a single cylinder engine to perform a study on the exact setup we, we have been discussing. The test engine in this study showed promising results with a decrease in specific fuel consumption, mainly due 
to an increased rate of combustion of the fuel. So to conclude what we've been talking about, we know that the combustion process is an imperfect one and that it has the capacity to be improved. The addition of a supporting gaseous mixture, like Brown's gas, can help in a more complete combustion through a higher combustion rate and added oxygen that fuel alone just can't fully provide for itself. So through the process of water electrolysis taking place on board a vehicle in an efficient HHO generator, an engine can be provided with not only ecological, but also financial benefits. That concludes my report on Brown's gas generation. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation, and I wish you all the best of health and luck. Thank you.